There are so many galaxies in our universe that shouldn't be there that it nearly seems impossible that they could exist. James Webb has recently discovered two galaxies that rank among the oldest ever observed. They are so old that they dwarf the Dark Ages. It is imperative that we consider the significance of these discoveries and determine which of our current scientific methodologies require a total overhaul. Have we been misled for nearly a century? And could we be inhabiting a cosmos without beginning? Our technology is developing at a rapid pace. We launched a groundbreaking observatory with James Webb in the summer of 2022, and its light sensitivity and range constitutes such a huge advancement that we can now easily see even the faintest light in the infrared region. We can now see a great deal farther into the cosmos than we could during Hubble's lifetime. James Webb's heightened sensitivity is essential for seeing items that were present not long after the Big Bang. The capacity of Hubble and JWST to observe distinct light wavelength ranges accounts for the majority of their disparity in light sensitivity. Hubble primarily operates in the visible and ultraviolet regions of the spectrum, whereas JWST focuses on the infrared. This method also allows James Webb to send its X-ray vision through clouds of dust, allowing it to see galaxies that Hubble was previously unable to see. Already amazing, Hubble's discoveries established a great deal of the groundwork for our current understanding of the early universe. James Webb is now prepared to go even farther in pushing these limits. It appears that this telescope will now go to a completely new direction in our science. After the amazing discoveries of Z12 and Z13, let's discuss the first brilliant idea behind the new telescope. The James Webb Telescope has discovered two amazing galaxies in the Pandora Galaxy Cluster that are so far away that they can only be seen through gravitational lensing. Actually situated in the Galaxy Cluster Abel 2744, some 3.5 billion light years from Earth, are these two galaxies. At this point, the cluster's enormous gravity bends space-time like a magnifying glass convex glass, enhancing background details and bringing far-off things into view. Using James Webb's ultra-deep near-speak and near-cam instruments, scientists from Penn State Eberly College of Science were able to uncover two of the most remarkable old redshift galaxies ever observed during this search. The search was originally conducted in order to obtain clues from the APO of the reionization of space. Cosmological redshift happens as light wavelengths elongate as a result of the universe's ongoing expansion. The cosmos has grown larger, the farther out a galaxy is from us, as light has moved across space to reach us. It moves farther and farther into the red color spectrum during this voyage. Humans could never see the infrared wavelengths that expose these two galaxies, but James Webb's near-infrared spectrometer and near-infrared camera barely miss any light, no matter how faint. It did not take long to ascertain their ages, indicating that we are dealing with two quite unique galaxies. Are they really supposed to be extinct since they are so old? The redshift of the recently found galaxy Uncover Z13 is 13.79%. With a redshift of 12.393, Galaxy Z12, the other galaxy found by the same scientists, ranks fourth among the oldest and most distant galaxies. It existed only 350 million years ago when the cosmos was first formed. The two uncovered galaxies have an atypical look. The two uncovered galaxies have the odd structure of a peanut and a fluffy ball, whereas other galaxies with equally significant red shifts typically seem dot-shaped. The two galaxies exhibit remarkable sizes as well. Galaxy Z12, for example, displays an edge-on disk six times bigger than any other galaxy previously observed at this APO. Amazing Macy's Galaxy. Dr. Stephen Finland made the discovery of the next marvel of the galaxy. 
Galaxy evolution is a field of research that does more for US astronomers than only explain how stars form groups. According to Finland, the history of the cosmos and the reconstruction of space-time processes tell the tale of the creation of humanity. The origins of life and its interstellar migration must also be addressed somewhere in the tale of the formation of stars and planets. Using the James Webb Telescope, the astronomer at the University of Texas at Austin's Department of Astronomy, who is leading the hunt for very old galaxies, located galaxies in the spectrum ZAL 610. Hubble's equipment had made it nearly impossible to see these galaxies before, but James Webb's arrival also provided Finlin and his colleagues with entirely new insights, opening up the possibility of an incredible discovery. Finlin found a galaxy on his daughter Macy's birthday that clearly has a red shift of 11.4, meaning it was formed 390 million years after the Big Bang. Not only is Macy's galaxy incredibly star-studded, but new stars are continuously being made there. For its antiquity, this makes it quite remarkable. Finlin and colleagues discovered a tremendous torrent of complicated galaxies in Webb's newly acquired photos. A few of them have the appearance of pinwheels, while others resemble wafer-thin vortices or blotchy spots. Currently, the researchers are tracking about a dozen other galaxies, some of which have red shifts of up to 15Z or more, and may be much older. Based on preliminary measurements, GNZ 11 is a genuine relic from the early cosmos and provides a view into its early stages, situated at an astounding 13.4 billion light-years away. For once, Hubble, rather than James Webb, made the finding of GNZ 11 in 2016. With the finding of this galaxy, the seasoned space telescope operator stunned the scientific community and demonstrated that he still had a lot up his sleeve. Moreover, GNZ 11 is so old that it challenges earlier cosmologies. It exhibits an atypically high star creation rate, similar to Macy's galaxy, and was formed 400 million years after the Big Bang. There is a common language across all these galaxies, their remarkable organization, abundance of old stars, and exquisite structure make it impossible for them to have grown in just 400 or 300 million years. If we are to believe our present cosmological models, they have to be older. But that would imply that they are older than the Big Bang and that the Dark Ages, which began 13.8 billion years ago, did not occur. The Big Bang is thought to have been the starting point of our cosmos. From a single point, space expanded suddenly. At first, the universe was made of dense, highly hot plasma in which protons and electrons twirled erratically. According to scientific calculations, the universe cooled down sufficiently after 380,000 years to give rise to the first stable atoms of helium and hydrogen. The dark era came to an end when the universe gradually becoming luminous. Photons could not move freely in space. Instead, they interacted with unbound protons and electrons. The universe became transparent once the first atoms were formed, allowing light to go about freely. We now refer to this initial light as cosmic microwave background radiation. With a telescope, we could theoretically look back at this moment in history. But even James Webb is not yet powerful enough to see that far. The telescope's range is estimated to be 13.5 billion years, maybe even more. However, the cosmic microwave background is visible to us. Now that a full series of galaxies that existed just 350 million years after the Big Bang have been provided to us by James Webb, galaxies especially those with exquisite morphology and impeccable organization, like the ones Finland and his team discovered, take billions of years to evolve. This implies that the age of the galaxies that have been found would have to go all the way back to the Dark Ages, which is just not feasible. Considering that hydrogen and helium atoms had only recently formed, 
How could galaxies have existed at that time? All these findings challenge the most salient features of standard cosmological models. It is plausible that the cosmos dark ages were considerably shorter than previously believed, or that the earliest stars and galaxies formed sooner or expanded more quickly. Maybe in the early stages of the cosmos, there was no constant expansion and the physical circumstances were entirely different, or maybe the universe was also more active and complicated. It appears that we will need to let go of a great deal of our past beliefs and reconsider the idea that the universe is expanding endlessly. In the 1920s, Edwin Hubble made the first observation that galaxies were veering away from Earth. The Big Bang Theory was actually inspired by this discovery. George Lemaitre proposed that the universe had expanded from a single point around the same time as Hubble. Later, Hubble and Lemaitre's theories combined to form the foundation of contemporary cosmology. The theory of the universe's continuous expansion has been called into question by a number of findings made in recent decades. One of these findings relates to the enigmatic dark energy, which is thought to be the reason of the universe's purportedly rapid expansion. Scientists Brian Schmidt, Saul Perlmutter and Adam Rees posed concerns in 1998 over the possibility that the universe's expansion pace had altered over billions of years. Numerous researchers have discovered related evidence since then, yet the expansion appears to be linear at times and non-linear at others. Since then, some scientists have come to the conclusion that the universe is not expanding everywhere at the same rate and degree, and that this may have something to do with the riddles surrounding dark energy and dark matter. But our understanding of dark energy and dark matter is still insufficient to fully unlock the mysteries of the cosmos. According to the hypothesis developed by Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok, the cosmos expands and contracts repeatedly as opposed to expanding steadily all at once. Conversely, Fred Hoyle discovered proof that the universe has perpetually existed and is in an unchanging state. He blamed faults in measurement and observation for the phenomenon of seeming expansion. According to the Big Bounce idea, the current universe's expansion resulted from a collapsing cosmos rather than a Big Bang. Check out the channel now. There will be a ton of amazing videos soon.